God for all that he's done. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Jeremiah chapter number 29, a very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. A very familiar passage of scripture. And uh, uh, I want to just, just, just uh, impart something to you. And I'm going to let you go. Let you go. Jeremiah chapter number Jeremiah chapter number 29, very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, as our custom, I ask everyone to please stand a can stand for the reading of God's word. Reading of God's word, Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, verses 1 through 11. Uh, when you have it, say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. We'll wait a minute. If you don't have it, um, when you have your Bibles, your Bibles, so uh, I suppose that you can now go to McDonald's without cash. I suppose. You can order on your phone. Uh, but there's some action you got to take. Uh, even if you just Uber Eats your McDonald's, you got to answer the door. Uh, when you come into the house of God, amen, bring your tablet, bring your phone, download the Bible on your phone uh, so you can read these words. Uh, you always want to read God's word because it's power in the word of God. And if all we do is read it, you have heard God. If all we do is read these scriptures, you have heard from God. So when you come into the house of God, get your Bibles. Uh, I like the Bible. I like the pages of it. Uh, get your tablet, get your phone, download the Bible app so you can read along with us. Amen. We're going to be reading from Jeremiah chapter number 29, verse number 1. Uh, the King James Version. Here beginneth the reading of God's word. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent to Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives and to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, jo Jokaniah, the king, the queen, and the eunuchs, and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem by the hand of Elsa, the son of Shaphan, the son of Jer Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the son of Helkiah, whom Zedekiah, the king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take you wives and beget you sons and daughters. And take the wives of your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminish. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For, so, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in your midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace not of evil to give you an expected end it's primarily from that 11 verse where you find these words for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. 
For a few moments I have with you, I just wanted to share this thought. God has a plan. Look at your neighbor and say, God has a plan. God, God has, say, no matter what's going on in your life, God has a plan. Dear Lord, we ask that you would bless us through your word. Help us to accomplish what you have sent us out to do. Have these words that you have laid on our heart to give. Find us where we are. And we be blessed by them. In Jesus' name, and every heart said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I begin to look at um, the state of the world and the state of the church, uh, I could only begin to wonder what God, with so many things happening in the world, so many things happening in the lives of the people of God, I begin to wonder, God, what are you saying to us? Uh, oftentimes uh, in this life, we can sometimes get lowed and rocked uh, to sleep serving God because uh, seemingly everything goes well. But what do you do when the wheels come off? What do you do when you get bad news after bad news? What do you do when the doctor report isn't favorable? What do you do when the uh, employer says, we got to let go? What do you do when your relationship and your marriage seems to be upside down? What do you do when your money is funny? I want to talk to you today. Uh, what, what is your hope built on? What is your hope built on in that? What are you trusting God to do in your life? Uh, what, what, what do you do when you have to take care of a loved one? Mm. What, what, what do you do when your life is turned upside down, inside out, and you're walking backwards. What do you do when life hits you so hard you don't know where you're going to get your next breath? I want to talk to you today that God has a plan. God has a plan. God has a plan. And oftentimes God's plan is not clear. Have you ever been walking with God and you just, you're frolicking in the tulips? You're skipping in the daisies. You're, you, 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 you know, on Little House on the Prairie, the little girl is just running through the field, touching the little dandelions, and it looks like life is good. Have you ever just been walking with God, and you like walking through a field, and you know, nothing wrong could happen in my life, and all of a sudden, the sky falls. All of a sudden, you get a phone call out of nowhere. All of a sudden, you said, what? in the world is going on. I want you to be encouraged, my brothers and sisters. God has a plan. God has a plan for your life and oftentimes God's plan for our life isn't a straight line. Oftentimes God's plan for our life isn't uh, seeing down the road. Oftentimes, the plan that God has for us is one day at a time. And if you can't take one day at a time, you have to take one step at a time. Uh, oftentimes, when you are walking with God, when you are trusting in God, and, and I know that in this generation, we have allowed prosperity to dominate the conversation. But in this life, you will have trouble. In this life, you will have difficulty. In this life, everything won't go right in your life. Uh, let me just say this. I need you to look at somebody and say, it's life. Say, say what you're going through. Tell them what you're going through. It's life. It is just life. It, it's just life, life. The Bible says time and chance happeneth 
to us all. Look at somebody and say, it's just life. Whether you get good news, whether you get bad news, it's just life. Whether your daughter rebels, whether your son comes out, look at somebody and say, it's just life. It's just life. It's just life. And I want you to know that it's life. It's life because I don't want you to be loathed. I don't want you to be rocked to sleep to believe that nothing bad should ever happen to you. Uh, you, 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 can't not, you cannot serve God. Uh, Jesus says, they that will live godly shall suffer persecution. And, and he said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. In other words, what Jesus is trying to let us know is that God has a plan. And oftentimes this plan isn't always clear. Oftentimes this plan doesn't, re uh, it's not a yellow brick road. Mm. Um, this, 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 sometimes this plan has hills and mountains and valleys. It has twists and turns. Uh, I just want to talk to somebody, if it ain't one bad thing, it's another. I just want to talk to somebody who's just been hit with a barrage, a series of unfortunate events, and you're asking yourself, what in the world is going on? My brothers and sisters, God has a plan. And the beauty about God having a plan is because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, God never starts something without already creating the ending. In fact, God creates the ending first, and then he marches you to the beginning. Y'all don't hear me. I, I want to give you something. I just gonna, I'm just going to let the cat out the bag. The cat out the bag is God knows the thoughts that he thinks toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. I want to let the cat out the bag that despite what you're going through right now, the thoughts that God have for you is for peace. The thoughts that God has for you is to bring you to a hope and the future. In our text today, the prophet Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He has been, he has been beaten. He has been thrown in prison. Um, these fellows in Jerusalem, these holy, so-called holy people, have taken the prophet himself and have beat him across the head with their scepters. They have imprisoned him. And when they fed him, they fed him with molded water and molded bread. Uh, God's man has been going through. And all they're trying to do is to make him stop prophesying the doom. Uh, I want to talk to you preachers out here. I don't care how popular things are. You got to say what God has given you to say. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you ministers out here. Resist the urge of being impressive. Let me say that again. You got to resist the urge of being impressive and say what God wants you to say. And oftentimes prophets come in and we look for a good word. But when Jeremiah showed up, when Jeremiah showed up, uh, the people trembled. The people feared because uh, he never had anything good to say. Uh, he talked about the death destruction of Jerusalem. He talked about how they were going to lose everything. And here's Jeremiah again in chapter 29. And his message hasn't changed. Uh, his message hasn't changed. You know Jeremiah. Uh, they beat him. They threw him in prison. They told him to shut up. And Jeremiah got depressed and he said, I almost shut up. He said, but God's word was like fire. Shut up in my bowls. He said, I tried to quit anything in your name. He said, but when I started thinking about how good God was, he said, it outweighed all the trouble that I had because God's word was like fire. 
and up in my bones and here he is in chapter 29 29 starts out he says I'm writing you a letter to the captives in Babylon those that have been carried away uh, into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar uh, Jeremiah says I'm writing you a letter now I want you to see the picture here Jerusalem has been ransacked um, they have stripped the gold off of Solomon's temple. All that beautiful awning, all that beautiful cedar, all those beautiful shields and chariots and goblets and cups and utensils, all those beautiful instruments that were overlaid with gold, pure gold. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the Scythians, the Chaldeans came in and took it all. Took it all. You're going to see in Daniel's chapter when Nebuchadnezzar's son gets the throne, he's going to rise up and say, bring me one of those goblets that they used to worship God in. He said, and pour me out the eyes, the, the worship, the, the, the blood sacrifices, the drink offering of our gods in these goblets. And when they pour in the cup and Nebuchadnezzar's son gets ready to take a drink, all of a sudden a finger appears and they started writing, the Bible says, in the plaster of the wall and it let out a message and Daniel interprets the message it's this the goblet that goblet that Nebuchadnezzar his father takes out the temple and now Je Jeremiah is part of the remnant that's left in Jerusalem and he's prophesying and now he's writing he says you residue of elders carried away captives he's writing to them in Babylon he says here's what I want you to do he said it's my hand that's writing it he says I'm sending it by the hand of Elsa he says here's what God says he says I want you number one to build houses I just want to tell somebody you've got to get comfortable in your new normal yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, uh, because faith, we have, we're so faithful. We got faith to believe God to do anything and everything. What we oftentimes do is we sit in whatever we're sitting in, at the hopes that it's going to be over real soon. But notice what Jeremiah says. He says, your deliverance is not coming quick. <laughs> he says, how can you know that your deliverance isn't coming quick? Look at some Somebody said, you're not going to get out of this overnight. Uh, you're going to have to sit in this for a while, baby. Uh, but God knows the thoughts that he's thinking. And so I don't want you to get, I don't want you to get upset because you think that you're going to get out of this real quickly. Uh, what you're feeling right now may take years for you to get over. Come on, somebody. I, I just want you to get, I want you to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, he says, I want you to build houses. Why does he tell them to build houses? Because they are believing that God's going to do what he did in Egypt. When he rose up a savior, when he rose up a deliverer named Moses, they are believing that God is going to do what he did in the judges. When he called Samson to come on the scene and deliver them from their enemies. God, they were believing that God's going to raise up a Joshua that's going to destroy their enemies and set them free from their captivity. But Jeremiah prophecy is different. He says to them, build houses. He says, you're going to have to live in this captivity. You're going to have to live in this place you're in right now for a while. Listen to what Jeremiah is saying. He said, God is working on something, but it's not going to be a quick fix. God is moving some stuff around, uh, but you're not going to come out of it other night. God is putting things in place. I need somebody under the sound of my voice to understand God is working and oftentimes it don't feel good because the thing you in has got you locked up tangled up, got you strangled got taken your breath away but God is working 
So he tells him, he says, I want you to build houses. Why is he saying build houses? He says, I want you to find yourself being comfortable in a place you don't want to be. He says, I want you to make you a home. Look at somebody say, make a home in the place you don't want to be. Oh, that's why you got to keep holding on to your marriage. I know it ain't good right now. I know it's tough right now. But you got to make a home you want to be. And so he says, I want you to build a house. He said, I want you to erect a permanent structure. He said, I want you to erect a permanent structure. He said, I want you to make an investment in it. There's somebody out here in the sound of my voice. I, I want to tell you, your children are coming back to your house. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. Said, oh, I, I done spent my whole life raising children. But in this season right now, God says, I want you to get comfortable being uncomfortable. So I'm going to send your children back to your house. And y'all not going to always get along. He said, but I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know you don't want to hear that. I know you're saying, listen, no, the jokers ain't coming back up in here. It can only be one queen in this house, baby. In this time, in this season, the queen gonna have to share her throne. Y'all don't hear me. Ah, you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. He says, I want you to yeah, look at look, look, look at somebody say, Lord, don't do it to me. <laughs> Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just want to let you know, he says, I want you to, Jeremiah, he's trying to advise them how to handle difficult situations. And there is a way to handle it. There is a way. Uh, there's a wrong way to handle it. Let me tell you the wrong way to handle what God is doing. Uh, murmuring and complaining. Uh, sitting around mad all the time. Uh, ain't nobody scared of you. Because uh, you mad because your face is frowned up that ain't gonna make nothing happen because you don't like what you in baby you better be comfortable being uncomfortable y'all got that for free i don't know where that came from but uh just walking around mad i hate that i'm going through it you, you that's the wrong way to go through it baby the wrong way to go through any test is to complain about it. Uh, that's why the soul writer, that's why y'all got to go back to them old songs. Uh, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Because you know in the end, you're going to win. Uh, see, but y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all don't, y'all, 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 y'all seen them fancy songs uh, that don't nobody know the words to. It's so lofty, uh, so expansive, uh, so rich. I don't know who y'all talking about. Uh, but I like the songs where he leads me. Uh, I will follow. Uh, if he tells me to go to a mountain, uh, if Jesus goes with me, I'll go. Uh, uh, you got to be said, I want you to build houses. I got to move fast. I got to move fast. He said, I want you to build houses. I want you to build houses. He said, I want you to build houses. He said, I want you to build houses because he says, you're going to have to house people uh, uh, that you might not get along with. Y'all got to hear me in here. Uh, uh, there's a time coming and it's here. It's here right now. Uh, there's going to come a time. There's going to come a time uh, where you're going to have to dwell with people uh, that you don't necessarily like. And God's going to put you together uh, until you start liking each other. Y'all, I wish I... Ooh, I wish I could preach it like I felt. Uh, I want I, God. God's doing something uh, because He's making you and molding you. Uh, and you thought He would make you through goodness. He, you thought He would make you through riches. You, you thought He would make you through good health. Uh, you thought He would make you through prosperity. But God says, "I'm gonna make you through trouble, and I'm gonna team you up with people you don't necessarily like." Uh, but I want you to get comfortable being uncomfortable.
says now, he says not only that, he said build ye houses and live in it. Uh, it's one thing to build a house, but it's another thing to make a home. He says, I want you to make a home in the place that's causing problems. He said, I want you to make a home in a place that irritates you because God, in order for you to be what God wants you to be, you got to learn how to deal with difficult people. You, you got to learn how to deal with being disrespected. You, you got to learn how to deal with being talked about. In order for you to be what God wants you to be, you got to learn how to deal with people that don't like you. Said dwell therein. Look at somebody say dwell in it. Dwell in it. Dwell in it. Live in it. Get comfortable in it. Watch this. He says, he says, he says, not only this, in this captivity, in this uncomfortable place, in this uncomfortable place, he says, not only do I want you to build houses and dwell therein, he says, I want you to plant gardens. He, said, he says, I want you to plant gardens. He says, I want you to make a life out of this. He says, he says, because what I'm doing for you ain't going to turn over in one year. It ain't going to turn over in two years. It ain't going to turn over in three years. But I'm working on something. I'm, I'm working on something. And so I need you to have some sustainability. So I want you to build a house and live in it. And then I want you to plant a garden. I want you to eat off everything I put away. And I want you to eat it with a smile on your face. Y'all think I'm... You think I'm being insensitive. You, you say you don't know how bad I hurt. <laughs> you don't know how bad it makes me feel. You don't know how bad my heart is broken. I'm telling you what God says. <laughs> he said, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. <laughs> I need somebody under the sound of my voice. I'm crying today. But I'm going to reap in joy. Because I'm learning how to be comfortable in an uncomfortable place. He said, I want you to plant a garden. I want you to, I want you to plant a garden. I want you to, he says, I, I, I want you to get so comfortable here. The place that I got you, I want you to put your residence at. He said, I want you to put your residence there. You know, you go some places, you vacation somewhere, uh, and, and you, you, you're not a resident, you're just vacationing. Uh, we went over to Aruba a few years ago, and the rule is in the Dutch colonies, if you visit Aruba 10 years in a row, you can apply for citizenship. Uh, but you got to visit there 10 years in a row, any Dutch colony. Uh, you got to go there 10 years and stay at least seven days. And so we kept going. If we kept going, we will have dual citizens. And what a dual citizen of a Dutch colony gives you uh, is automatically you get housing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, automatically they give you a 50 year lease on property and so you come over here with your American dollars and it stretches a long ways over there in the Dutch colony so you find an acre of land uh, still knows what I'm talking about you find an acre of land and the co Dutch colony will give you a lease 50 years to make that land what you want to be that's what God is telling them here he says I want you to go into this place that I'm taking you and put your residency there. He says, you're not going to be vacationing. You're not going to be touring, but you're going to live in this place. He says, I'm trying to let you understand that while I'm working on this side, I need you to be doing what I need you to do here. The truth of the matter is the only reason children of Israel are in captivity is that they forgot and stopped celebrating the holy days. They stopped working worshiping on the festivals and they stopped celebrating jubilee god told them in the book of deuteronomy he says for every 
seven years. He said, I want you to plant crops for six years. And on the seventh year, don't plant nothing. Let the ground come up on its own. And after the seventh year, another six years. Plant what you want to plant on the seventh year. Let the ground bring up what it wants. He said, because I want the land to rest. He said, I want you to land the rest. Here it is. He says, on the 49th year, plant. Uh, in the 49th year, he says, plant. No, on the 49th year, don't plant. But what he told them is on the 49th, the seventh, seven year time span, when the earth brought up its own goods, on the following year, mm -hmm, which is the 50th year, he said, I want you to make that a jubilee. And he says, I want you to make it a jubilee. And the jubilee means everything goes free. If somebody owed you money for 50 years, their debt is walked, wiped out in the year of jubilee. If somebody owed you money for land, they never paid you, the debt is wiped clean for that 50th year. They free, clear. If anyone is in prison for any fraction, they get come out of jail on the 50th year. Well, the children of Israel, uh, they stopped celebrating the Sabbath. Uh, they stopped letting the land rest. They were planting every year. They never let the land rest. So what God says, since you won't let the land rest and trust me in the lean years, what I'm going to do is cause Nebuchadnezzar to come upon you and take you out of the land that you can't rest in or plant in and take you to Babylon and there my land will rest. And he tells them because you refuse to honor of me and trust me I'm going to let the land rest not for 50 years but for 70 years 10 Sabbaths what God is trying to let them understand is that if you obey my word you will prosper y'all I'm trying to let you understand oh you might think you've been getting away with doing what you want to do but God has a reckoning God will be honored his word will come to pass. And he says, if you don't give me what I've asked you, what I've required for you, he says, I'm going to let this come up on you. Jeremiah then tells them, he says, because you didn't honor God, I want you to get comfortable being uncomfortable. He said, I want you to build a house. I want you to plant a garden. Watch this and eat the fruit thereof. He says, then take you wives and beget you sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. In other words, he says, I want you to marry over here. In other words, what he's saying is, you're going to need some help. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. Uh, I can do this all by myself. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> no, you will not. <laughs> no, you will not. No, you will not. God has designed it. <laughs> he has set it up. I see, I see how y'all, y'all, y'all look at the anointing. Y'all just got the, the anointing that some fell off of y'all. Y'all was shade standing up, waving. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, y'all ain't got nothing. He ain't talking about me. I'm talking to you, baby. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm back. I'm big enough to tell you to your face. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, you're not going to be able to accomplish this on your own. He says, I want you to marry. Take you wives. What Jeremiah is telling them, he says, this ain't going to be quick. That's all he's saying. He's saying, this won't be quick. This won't be quick. He says, you're going to have to do everything you did as if you were in Jerusalem. The only difference is you will be captives. You won't be able to do what you want to do. Go where you want to go say what you want to say you will not have rights he says I want you to take you wives and have children he says and your children take sons and let them marry women too and take your daughters and give them to me he says I want you listen now what the text says he says I don't want you to decrease in the land when I saw that, I said, look at God. He's got a plan that although they are in captivity, although everything around them is going, he's got a plan where he's going to pull them out. And he does not want to pull them out weak. He does not want to pull them out barren. He does not want to pull them out lacking. He says, when you're you going to come out better 
than when you went in. You're going to come out more than when you went in. You're going to come out stronger. Because God has a plan. Look at somebody say, God's got a plan for my life. Ah, then he said, then he says, let no prophet, he tells him, now he tells him, let no prophet deceive you. He said, don't let your diviners, he said, don't let anybody tell you that what I'm telling you ain't the truth. He says, this is what I want you to know. He says, if any prophet or diviner or anybody comes to tell you that God's getting ready to pull you out of this thing before 70 years, he says, know this they are false and God didn't send them then he tells them he says for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished in Babylon let me tell you what Babylon is as I hasten to my close but Babylon is the place of the world everything ungodly happens in Babylon Babylon is Instagram y'all not gonna like me Babylon is Facebook Babylon is is Snapchat. Babylon is stars. Babylon is HBO. Babylon is the club. Babylon is your secular music that you still listen to. Now I can't figure out for the life of me how you can listen to all this secular music with the Holy Ghost power in you. All it's going to make you want to do is have sex. All it's going to make you want to do is smoke a joint. All it's going to make you want to do is fight somebody. Why would you want to do that and you got the Holy Ghost y'all not gonna like me but that's all right she ready y'all not gonna like me but I'm here to tell you right now God has a plan he says Babylon after 70 years have been accomplished he says I'm gonna complete it now he's trying to make a demarcation in the time because he told Abram he said your people are going to go into Egypt for 400 years he told them 420 years but they stayed there 430 years they delayed their deliverance because of unbelief he said I would have brought them out sooner if they would have believed he said while I was trying to bring them out I had to work on the man that will bring them out because he went all together right. But he tells Jeremiah, I'm not changing my mind on this one. He says, after 70 years, you're going to come out of Babylon. That's longer than some of us been alive. He says, you're going to have to spend all of your life in captivity. He says, but after 70 years have been accomplished at Babylon, I will will visit you that's the good news y'all that God knows where you are touch your neighbor say God knows where you are he knows your address he knows your zip code he knows your area code he knows what color house you live in he knows what room you're in he knows what kind of car you drive God is going to visit us. Look at somebody and say, he won't leave me here. A man might leave you there. A woman might leave you there. Your employer might leave you there. But God won't leave you there. He said, I'm going to visit you and watch this and perform my good word towards you. This is where I love God. Because here's the beauty of it. It's a prophet writing. And the prophet is telling you if any other prophet tells you something different, don't believe him. Look at the hilarity of it. Look at the humor of God. I'm going to use a prophet to deliver the word. And if another prophet comes to tell you something different, don't you believe that prophet? But God says, I'm going to deliver, I'm going to visit, and I'm going to perform 
my good word. That's why I'm glad I don't serve Buddha. That's why I don't glad I don't serve Confucius. That's why I don't serve a God that sits here inside the Chinese store with a fat belly. And I gotta put oranges and apples and candles around him. Cause he's not a performing God. But the God I serve is a performing God. He will do what he said he would do. And why would this stuff come upon me? I've been trying to serve him. I've been trying to live for him. I've been trying to be what he called. This stuff is still coming. I, am I going through this? He says, but I know the thoughts that I have toward you. And this is.